yeah, so I, uh, so this was a tour that I discovered actually in 2019 or so. I was supposed to, I originally signed up to take it in 2020, and then 2020 happened. Um, so this was a tour led by, as I said, uh, Carolyn Lewis, who's a professor at Luther Seminary. She's a preaching professor and kind of well-known in preaching circles. She has a podcast and all that kind of stuff. Um, and, and, you know, I've had opportunities, you know, I've, I've heard about the Holy Land tours before and, um, you know, candidly was never all that interested in it. Um, sort of felt like it was something I, I was supposed to do because of my job. Uh, but when I, when I saw this one being through the lens of the women in Jesus' life, it really kind of was that hook that, that got, me, got me there. Um, so I, I traveled by myself. I was the only one. I didn't know anybody else going on this tour. Um, found out a couple days before that there were a couple pastors in, in Concord that were going as well, uh, who, I, who I didn't know. But um, for the most part, well, I, even, even with them, I went out you know, completely by myself, which is something a little outside of my, uh, my comfort zone, but, but I'm glad I did. <clears throat> um, so it takes a little while to get there. Um, so our trip, uh, or my trip, um, went through from Germany. We had a uh, flew to, to Germany basically overnight. You know, once the time changes get in and everything, I get kind of confused. But I um, uh, flew to Germany, and then I had a five-hour stopover in Frankfurt. Midnight hour time, I think 5 o'clock in the morning their time. So that was, Frankfurt Airport is huge, which I didn't realize. So I kind of needed that time. Um, and then from there, it was another four hours or so to, to go to, to Israel. <laughs> so uh, the first place that we went to was the Dead Sea. And it was really nice because, you know, after all of that traveling, after 18 hours or whatever it had been of traveling, uh, nothing was scheduled that day. And we were at a resort in, in the Dead Sea. So we had nothing to do, which was fantastic. Um, and I'm not sure if you remember, but uh, right before I left on sabbatical, the sabbatical planning team gave me this box, which has the names of everybody in the church uh, in it. So I brought the box with me, so you were all with me. And, uh, so here's a picture of you and the Dead Sea. <laughs> um, and, and Bobby also had given me um, this little rock. Um, Anyway, it's a little rock from the island of Iona in Scotland, which is where I had gone on, on my last sabbatical. So this was a way to, to kind of connect uh, both sabbaticals. And also I realized after a while that the box was a little bit clunky to be carrying around everywhere. So, so the, the rock became your, your symbol and your, uh, your prop. Um, so this is from the balcony of my, my room overlooking the, uh, the, res, uh, the Dead Sea up there. Um, so this is right, right down about here. Um, so, so that's, this is just sort of the area around the, uh, my hotel, um, <laughs> pretty kind of desolate. And I don't, I don't know if this is just kind of people, my age group, my generation, but every time we're at a beach somewhere, we have to take a picture of our feet in the right. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, so it was really nice to just, just sit on the beach, you know, like after all of that traveling and stuff. At first it was kind of like, well, this is gonna be a wasted day, we have so much to do, and then it was so nice to just sit. And, um, and of course, I, I went into the Dead Sea. Um, so I, I had to realize when I was there that, um, there are, so this is the bottom of the sea as I, as I walked into it, and, these are all little balls of salt um, that fortunately I, I had been warned about ahead of time to bring a pair of shoes that you could walk into. Because I tried the first time to walk in there and it was, it was like impossible. But my feet were nice and soft the next day. <laughs> um, and then the, the second video here is this is me um, floating in the Dead Sea. <laughs> So it, it, in general, it was very easy. It was just hard to hold a phone and film myself <laughs> while I was doing it. <laughs> but you'll see, it really, like, it took no effort at all. It was just laying right on top of all that. What is it called, the Dead Sea? Uh, yeah. The Dead yeah. Sea. Yeah. The Dead Sea. Yeah. Dead Sea? Um. Dead sea? Oh. <laughs> 
So, okay, so this is, this is where the, the hotel was, uh, so right about down here, and then we headed up a little bit to, to Masada National Park. <clears throat> um, so this is a site that, um, if you see it up here, this, is, this was one of King Herod's palaces. So this was a palace that, um, you know, up on, this, up on this hill here, and here we're on top of it, so you can see the, the Dead Sea behind it. Um, so it was, you know, militarily a great, great vantage point, and, you know, nobody could, could attack you. And then, um, so after Jesus' time, uh, when the Romans came in and uh, attacked Jerusalem and, and attacked Israel, there were a group of, uh, I forget how many, a thousand, two thousand or so um, uh, Israeli soldiers and their family who went up to this, this palace to, to try to fend off the Roman soldiers. So they were surrounded by about 10,000 soldiers at one point. Um, so it's, it's a part of, of Israel's law now, uh, war, and uh, the Israeli army takes their, their oaths there. So here you can see some of the ruins that were around, and um, you know, some of the walls that, that still stand. Um, it, was, it was a pretty, pretty significant complex. You know, we didn't even kind of have time to do all of it. <laughs> so when they started to restore it, when they found the ruins, ruins and started to restore it, um, you can see this black line here. So the black line marks what was originally found. And then anything above the black line has been kind of a, an effort of, of restoration to, to give a sense of what was around. Uh, and then you'll, there were... Um, uh, original mosaics and some of the designs were still still on parts of the wall. So this is kind of a mock-up of what the palace looked like. It was these, these three different layers and we're on top here. So this is me up top kind of looking down at this middle layer. Um, it, was, it was a really interesting um, day because we were talking about, talking about Herod and talking about kind of what a genius he was and all of this you know, innovative stuff. And you know, this is the Herod who the stories say when, when they found out about Jesus being born, that he ordered the, the slaughter of the innocents, you know, to go out and kill all of the firstborn babies. So kind of, you know, a lot of kind of cognitive dissonance about well, wow, what a genius and wow, what a what an insane person. Uh, so this was a um, uh, a Byzantine church that had, had come along later on and was added there. And again, you can see some of the um, the mosaics. Now this is this was a, this was something I wasn't expecting that becomes a theme kind of throughout. So there are all of these original, you know, the original sites from Jesus' time, from before Jesus' time. And then the Romans come in and destroy most of those sites. And then the Byzantines come in and restore them. And then the Ottomans come in and destroy them. So there, there are all of these kind of levels on top of levels on top of levels about what's going on. So, so the Byzantine church is a little bit later than the original. Um, still so from there now we, we headed up a little bit more on the Dead Sea um, to Qumran. So this was, um, if you uh, remember in the 70s and 80s, the um, Dead Sea Scrolls. This is where the Dead Sea Scrolls were found. Um, so there was, so around the time of Jesus, um, there was a, a community of, of monks basically who lived there called the Essenes. And what they sort of found out is that they, they had scrolls of, of the Hebrew Bible, what we call the Old Testament, um, and they had stored them away in these stone jars. Um, so the story is in the 70s, I think it is, there was a, a, a shepherd's son who was playing with a ball, and he tossed the ball into one of these caves. And when they went in, they um, started to look and they found these jugs that had scrolls from Jesus' time about, you know, with the Hebrew Bible in it. Um, so you can kind of see all of these different uh, um, caves. <coughs> so from there, and this is all still the same day now, this is day, day two, um, we headed up a little bit, little bit further north. Um, you know, where are we now? Yeah, so, so now we're headed up past the Dead Sea, um, more towards the center here. Uh, so now this is a place called Beit Shean, and while it's not directly related to Jesus, um, they use it, it's a really good example of what the, the Roman cities would have looked like in Jesus' time. Um, and one of the things that I thought was really fascinating, back here, this hill, uh, it's called the Tell. 
Um, so basically, this is all man-made. So like I was saying about the civilizations kind of building on top of each other, that's what this is. And they've, they've done some excavating, and they, they think that there's, there's up to 25 different civilizations in this hill, going back to the Neanderthal period. Um, So again, you see some of these, uh, the mosaics from around the time. This is a Byzantine cross of so when the Byzantines came in. This was um, a baptismal font um, for a church that was around there. And I forget the timing, but there was, a, there was an earthquake um, that destroyed it you know, way back, like 800 or something like that. And they just left the columns there, I think because it would have taken a lot to, to lift them up, but also to, to show um, kind of the damage and how big it is. Um, over here, this is an amphitheater, um, and this is actually, they, they think it would have been about three times the size of this. Uh, and then over here, this is kind of like a main street. There are different shops all along the side. There was a bathhouse there, there was a church, things like that. <laughs> so then that night we ended up, um, so we headed up, so now we're, we're up here. This is the Sea of Galilee. Uh, so this is the view from my room of the Sea of Galilee, uh, the night when we got there. And then this is what it looked like in the morning. With, with all of the <laughs> so that morning we headed to now down a little bit, a little bit further south, down to, to the mouth of the Jordan River, um, which is the, the northern site of the, the baptismal site, one of the sites that they believe John the Baptist could have, could have been baptized in, possibly where Jesus was baptized. <coughs> Um, and you can see the change in scenery, you know, from where we had been, from, from really barren desert to this, this lush um, that outcropping. And there were just, I mean, hundreds, if not thousands of people um, were there to be baptized as pilgrims. And you'll see most of the people wearing these white um, baptismal gowns. And one of the things that I really loved was just, as you walk around, you could hear, hopefully you can hear, um, all of the different uh, languages that were being spoken. Okay, bye bye, boo. Ayo, bis a, be, Thank you. So yeah, so there were there were people from from all around the world, and you know, you walk walk a few feet and just hear different languages. Um, I loved there would be different groups of people that would just seemingly spontaneously burst into song and you would hear all these different songs coming. <laughs> um, so I took, I took the rock and, and gave you all a little bit of baptism. Uh, <laughs> um, and then uh, my group and I, um, we all um, affirmed our baptism, remembered our baptism. Let's go down, come on down. Oh, siblings, let's go down, down to the river to pray. That was really fun. Um, really meaningful, too. So then from there, we, we headed up. Uh, so we're, we're starting to kind of go around the, uh, the Lake of Galilee, Sea of Galilee. Um, so this is a, a fishing village that has been excavated fairly recently. Um, that they believe may have been Magdala, the, the home of Mary Magdalene. Um, and there's this really great um, synagogue that was excavated. You know, really just a lot going on. You can see the, the, the mosaics again. And this is a replica of, of the altar that was found. And you can see um, up top here the, what they now call the Magdala rosette. It's a little 12 petaled rosette that's become kind of a symbol of, of the area. And um, so, yeah, so this is um, outside of that synagogue. There's this town, you know, the remains of the town. These are all uh, shops that would have been at the town. It's really interesting with all of these places to see kind of how compact everything. Everything was was you know really close together. Now the the Catholic Church actually has done a really great job at this site. Um, so they built this this sanctuary, and it's. They, you know, they point out the fact that it's a sanctuary, it's not a church, it's open to all faiths, all denominations. Um, and it's dedicated to the women in Jesus' life. So in, the, in this, this vestibule here, all of these different um, pillars have names of, of women who, are in Jesus, who were in Jesus' life, who were in the story. And then there's this one blank one, 
where you take some water and you write the name of women in your life or women today, it's all sort of dedicated to, to the women today. And then downstairs, there's this chapel. Um, and they said this floor is first century stone. So this was just this, this quiet chapel downstairs. You can see this, this mosaic up here, or this painting up here of the, the woman who touched the hem of Jesus' garment. Um, and so this altar here, that's where your, your stone is there. Oh no, up here. And then this is just on the floor. Um, and the, uh, um, our uh, tour guide, uh, our tour leader, who was a 19-year-old woman from, from Italy, who was fantastic, um, talked about how this room was a very special place that often, like kind of as the tour moved on, there were people who, who stayed there and left. And, uh, and I was one of those. Me and, me and one of my friends sat there, and it was, it was the first time that I you know, openly cried at one of these sites. There was just something in that space that was so powerful. Um, so now, so this is, you can't really see it up here, so this is kind of the area of the, um, the, Gal the Sea of Galilee, um, what they call the Evangelical Triangle. So there are a lot of different stories that happen, happen around here. So this is called the Church of the Loaves and Fishes, on the site of where they, they believe Jesus did the, the, the miracle of the Loaves and Fishes. Um, again, you can see the difference here, so this is the original uh, the original site that was excavated and then what they built on top of it. Um, I've got a sermon brewing in me somewhere about taking all of these holy sites and building churches on top of them. Because um, they just, you know, so I think one of the things with that past, the, the chapel in the other, um, Magdala, was that, <laughs> that connection to the first century. You know, and I wanted that in so many other places. And every time I got there, there was a church on top of it. And I couldn't get there. <laughs> So this is, this is uh, next week's sermon. This is Capernaum. Um, so this is you know, where they believe Peter lived. Uh, so these are the remains of what they think could have been Peter's house. This is the town of Capernaum. So, so Peter's house is over here. This is the town, and then this is the synagogue, the synagogue here. So this was, this was one of the first real disappointments to me because you know, they're saying this is the synagogue where Jesus could very well have preached here. This could be the synagogue from Luke 4 where Jesus and starts his ministry and everything. And then I get there and they say, yeah, it's these stones down here. The Byzantines built a church on top of it. <laughs> so I got a little, little upset there. But, um, um, one thing that I did appreciate, uh, you can't really see it in this picture, but the, the church that's built, so this, this, Peter's house is actually underneath this church. But the church is hovering above it and there's, there's a window so you can look down into it. They didn't, they didn't just build right on top of it, which is nice. Um, and, and sitting outside of these walls, you know, I had a moment of, you know, even if I couldn't go in there, this very well could have been a site where Jesus sat and chatted with his friends. And this is the, the, the Sea of Galilee from Capernaum, which is just gorgeous. Um, so then we headed, uh, so again, we're in this, this triangle here, so now we, we headed, headed up the hill a little bit. This is called the Church of the Beatitudes. Um, so this is the inside of the church, you can see a little bit of the view out here. And then these are the grounds, which were just really, really nice, really lush. Um, there were these different plaques that had, you know, different beatitudes around. And I, I liked the peace, peacemaker one, so I took a picture of you there. Um, you know, again, it, like, one of the things that I really appreciated with all of these sites, the people who ran them were always like, this might be where this happened. You know, like, nobody was like, this is absolutely, you know, we have 100%. Um, and this was one of those sites where it was like, you know, even if this wasn't exactly where it happened, it gave me such a great sense of, you know, being up there and, and looking down and imagining, you know, what crowds were like and Jesus were talking and, and getting to see, you know, the sea underneath me. It was, um, it was a neat experience. And then this one I've talked about a little bit before. So this is the, the Church of the Primacy of Peter. So, um, so they believe that this, this is the site um, of the end of John's Gospel, where the, uh, the disciples go out and they're fishing and they're not catching anything. And there's a man on the beach who they don't realize is Jesus. And he says, why don't you throw the, throw the net on the other side of the boat? And they pull up 186 fish or whatever specific number they give. Um, and, and then when they come back, Jesus is on the beach uh, cooking up the fish and making them a nice 
beachside breakfast, which is just my favorite image of Jesus. Um, and, and in that, Jesus, Jesus is talking to Peter, and he says, Jesus, uh, Peter, do you love me? And, and Peter says, you know I do. And he says, then feed my sheep. It says that three times, and that's, uh, that was part of my ordination vows. So this was, was a really powerful place to me. Um, and one where I, you know, so this was the first time I was able to put my feet in the Sea of Galilee. You know, this is what the beach looks like. Here's, here's your stone. Um, and this was, you know, this was kind of the first place um, that I was able to sort of recommit myself to, to this job and my calling. You know, the, the baptism was one of kind of my relationship with Jesus. And this was really like a kind of, rem you know, reminder of why I do this and, and how much I really care about it. Um, this, this was a neat plaque that was over there. So it says, um, <clears throat> I can read it. The deeds and miracles of Jesus are not actions of the past. Jesus is waiting for those who are still prepared to take risks at his word because they trust his power underneath. I just like that continuity. So, uh, so this day that had started out with, um, with the baptism in the Jordan ended with a uh, sunset cruise on the Galilee. <laughs> Jesus slept on the Galilee, so I had to do it myself. Um, this was another, you know, like to, to get a sense of, you know, when Jesus talks about a city on a hill and stuff, to, to like be there going, oh, okay, I totally get that. You know, like, and to, to imagine what it was like, you know, as it got dark and to see the, the lights up there and to think about, you know, even just being able to see candlelight and torchlight. Um, so we, uh, so we started the day with, with baptism in the Jordan and we ended with, with communion on the sea. When I fall on my knees with my face to the sun. So this is the next the next day now. So this is where our hotel was. So now we start heading um, heading out west a little bit more. This was uh, I talked a little bit about this today. So we head head over to Cana. So this is the the Catholic church that I was talking about today. So this is the outside. This is the kind of upstairs of the church where you walk in, and then when you head downstairs are the ruins of the house where the wedding may have taken place, and this replica of the the wine wine jug. These are just some pictures of, of modern day Cana, you know, outside as we were driving around. Um, one of the things that I couldn't really get a picture of, and I'll talk a little bit about later, but especially in some of these, these um, higher elevations and looking out, there were some places where there were clear delineations between Israeli territory and Palestinian territory. Like it was just worlds away, and you can see. Um, See, see what the fight of the Palestinians is like, which is a sermon in a couple of years. Um, so this is the, uh, the Greek Orthodox Church of the Annunciation. So this is the outside, and here's the inside. So the, the Greek Orthodox Church says that um, Mary uh, uh, received the, the, you know, the angel came to Mary while she was out fetching water. So this is the well that's inside the church, and um, it actually, the water from the well runs down to the center of town to these faucets, so, so when people were using the well for drinking, they could go down there uh, to, to get the water instead of having to go into the church. And then this is the Basilica of the Annunciation. So these are, <laughs> I think it's a half mile apart, so the, the Greek one and the, the Catholic one. Um, so this is, I talked about this this morning, this is the, the Basilica of the Annunciation. Um, there's the labyrinth that I walked. So this is the inside. This is upstairs, and uh, there's a smaller chapel downstairs, and again, kind of overlooking what's going on. So this here, they believe, is the, were the remnants of, of the house where Mary was living when she um, received the angel. Um, I missed the story about this, but they called these these Mary's stairs or something, which I forget what that was about. Uh, and again, you can sort of see the levels, you know, so the house is there, the churches that other people have built on top of it uh, are around there as well. Um, this was, a, um, this was a, a powerful place for me because I grew up Roman Catholic, and even though I don't have 
much of a connection to it anymore. Um, you know, it's the faith that, that I really learned from my grandmother, my grandma O'Brien, who was, you know, very, very devoted Catholic in her own way. Um, and, you know, Mary was important to her, and this was, this was a place where I was able to, to be, with, be with my ancestors in this space. Um, one other thing I wanted to point out. Um, <laughs> so we've, we've often, uh, and, and summertime and a couple other times, we've met here for, for services that we call the well. Um, and one of the things we've done a couple times, Bobby's brought in some artwork and, and other uh, pieces based on the Annunciation, and we've, we've looked at the pictures and we've talked about what the Annunciation was like. Uh, so, so this here is kind of a, a dedicated to Bobby. So I have the stone that Bobby gave me. We're at the Annunciation, the labyrinth that's important to me. Um, it was, it was really nice to be at. Um, so this is, this is outside of the Basilica of the Annunciation. So these are remnants of a town that they said could have been you know, a, a Nazarene town. Um, and then there's a, there was a smaller chapel uh, dedicated to St. Joseph. And in the basement there, um, they said that this could have been um, Joseph's workstation, a uh, work, work, what's the word I'm looking for? Uh, workplace, work, workshop, that's it. <laughs> um, so this is, this is outside now, kind of modern, modern Nazareth. Um, you can see this here, and it was, you know, a, a bustling city. Uh, can't quite get a sense of what the roads were like, but most, most, many of the roads that we were in were these, you know, tiny, narrow roads, and we're in a, you know, full coach bus um, that our our driver was just amazing. At. Uh, so here we're we're heading heading up a little bit north to um, Zippori or Sepphoris. Um, so this was a place where, where my cynicism really kind of started to get me. It had been a long day anyway, but, um, but the story is that Sepphoris is where Mary was born and grew up, or where Mary grew up. This is the, t the town where Mary's parents were. I struggle to believe that anybody was, you know, has records on who Mary's parents were, this, this poor peasant girl. Um, but this was, it was... I'm told this is another site that was a really uh, a nice kind of sense of a Roman city, you know, around Jesus' time. I, I didn't go and look at it. Um, but also because I was able to just sit out here and just admire this, this view, which was just incredible. And again, that sense of, um, you know, being a city on a hill and, and, and kind of the distance that, that people traveled. Um, and this is also this is one of the places I'll talk a little bit about more. But but throughout the trip, where, wherever I was, at some point during the day, you would hear the Muslim call to prayer. Uh, so this was a place where you can kind of hear it coming over the hills, which was which was very neat. So this is Bethlehem, probably exactly how you picture it every every Christmas. Uh, uh, this is the view from my room in Bethlehem. So we're headed west a little bit more. Um, so this is, hopefully you can hear this, this is, this is uh, you know, in my room on the balcony listening to the Muslim call to prayer. So this is Sunday morning. So we went to the Evangelical Lutheran Christmas Church, who has the greatest mission statement of any church, continuing Christ's ministry of teaching, preaching, teaching, and healing in his birthplace. Like, like they have the, the best like shortcut to come out with something. Um, so, uh, so this was this is a really a really neat place, and we um, uh, you know there are often Americans and others coming through. Most of the group that I was with were Lutheran, um, you know, as the trip came through, through the seminary. Uh, but one of the things that was really great was, was having the service in both Arabic and English. Um, the, the pastor spoke both and would kind of go back and forth, and we would, we would um, sing hymns together, 
in both and do prayers together in both. And the um, so the pastor didn't didn't know we were going to be there until that morning. Basically, normally he prepares like a sermon in English and things like that. Uh, so he kind of apologized to us and he he gave his sermon in Arabic. And then he was like, okay, so for our English speaking friends, and summed it up in you know like thirty seconds a minute. And I was just like, like that's something that every preacher needs to, needs to be able to do, you know, pull out those those three points and, and let people know. Um, so outside of the church, uh, so the church was was up on a hill, and now we're headed down to what's called Major Square. So this is, I forget exactly what they called this, but this is, um, you know, a kind of crowded road that we were all walking on, uh, shops on either side, and. and um, Things like that, and so we're headed down. So this is Major Square. This here is the Church of the Nativity, which is uh, you know where where it's believed to be the site of Jesus. <laughs> and you can just get kind of get a sense of how crowded it was. You know, it was just I, I don't know how these cars got in and got out again. Um, <clears throat> so in the church, so one of the things that was neat about the church, they 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 say it's the uh, the oldest continuous place of worship um, since 376. Um, and so the entrance is what they call the, um, the the door of humility. So in order to get into it, you have to bow down to, to get through. So in the church, this is um, kind of a mash of cultures. <laughs> yeah. So here, you know, here's the line that we were on. We were on it for, I think, close to two hours. Uh, I kind of lost it. Uh, there was some renovation going on, but here you can see some Byzantine murals. Um, this is, I, I think the Armenian Orthodox run it now, and I forget exactly who runs it, but you know, so the Orthodox church, these are kind of Orthodox decorations and, and decor. Um, so, uh, so, so there's kind of a door over here that, we're, that this goes to, uh, the other side of this wall. And as we were approaching the door, there were a couple of priests who came up and said, you know, there's going to be a, an Armenian mass in, in 30 minutes or something, you know, and we're going to close this door and shut it down kind of thing. We had been there like an hour and a half. So, so all 30 of us, you know, got through the door just in time. Um, and then there's this, uh, and this is a kind of semicircular staircase that heads downstairs with no railings or anything. It's a little bit treacherous um, into what they call the grotto. So in the grotto is this spot here is where they say Jesus was born. Um, and then behind that, um, I mean, if I, as I'm facing that, if I turn around, there's what they call the Chapel of the Magi. And what I was told is the manger is here. I've looked at the picture a whole bunch of times. I don't really know what they're talking about. <laughs> um, but I also, I got maybe like, 45 seconds there. Like it was like there was a priest there going, okay, okay, come on, let's go, let's go, let's go. Like it was not at all a you know sacred moment. Um, and then so this is um, the the uh, shepherd's field where they, they say the shepherds lived and worked and where the angels came to to uh, to talk to them. Here's the little chapel that was there. Um, and again, you know, like I liked this sense of kind of where they were, you know, they would have had to go down to Nazareth and, you know, it was a little bit of a trip. Um, you know, and then every once in a while things would, you know, get thrown off by the souvenir shop that was outside. Um, <laughs> this sign here was like, you know, you can only be here for five minutes, like, like rushing you along. Um, one thing that I, that I loved in, in a lot of the places, uh, you know, so all these tour groups would come through and, and tour guides would be talking about the history and what was going on and um, depending on the place and kind of how sacred it was, how, how in, in action it was, um, they, they would discourage that so there weren't a lot of people talking. But the sign outside would say no explanations. <laughs> <laughs> so, I really, so, so on this site there, were, there was a cave where they, they said the, the shepherds may have lived. Um, and hopefully you can hear this. 
in the morning and here's you know, Bethlehem Square again and then we went back later on at about uh, 8 o'clock, 9 o'clock at night and you can just see how different it was. Um, this is Marone, he's our, he was our bus driver, he was really cool. Um, and so this was a night, so we, we went out and we did some some, uh, some exploring of, of Bethlehem and Major Square and uh, a couple stories came out of this. One will come up in a couple days about a shopkeeper that we met. And the other one, um, you know, there were a group of us that, that were really moved by Magdala. I talked a little bit about the, the Magdala Rosette. Um, so somehow this night I found myself in a tattoo parlor at, um, at 1 o'clock. We, we left around 3.30, 4 o'clock. Uh, so there, there's my tattoo. Um, and this is, all four of us that day got, got that tattoo and a couple others got it later on. Um, but it was a... A fun, fun adventure. <laughs> so, so the next day we um, we headed into Bethlehem, and this was something that I sort of tangentially understood, but I really didn't get. So this is a wall that's built around, technically built around um, Palestinian territory, dividing Palestinian territory from Israeli territory. So we're on the Palestinian side. Here. Um, you know, if you actually look at blueprints and stuff like that, it's built on Palestinian territory. They've you know, encroached on a lot of the land. But um, the site of the wall was really just powerful. And so this is this was a uh, hotel um, uh, started by the, the artist Banksy. It's called the Walled Off Hotel. Um, and so this is, you know, the hotel's right here, and this is the street, you know, it's right in the shadow of the wall. And you can see just all of this different um, graffiti and everything that folks have put on that. This was some of the artwork inside that was, that was really powerful. Um, and you know, here you can, if you can see there's a laser pointing at Jesus' head. Uh, you know, a, a, a child breaking down the wall. Um, uh, this was one, yeah, the, um, you know, the crash with the wall behind and, and a, a blast there. Um, so the shopkeeper that I'll talk about in a few weeks uh, in Bethlehem, um, this was one of the things that he made. And, and if you look at it closely, it's it's a crash, and the family, the holy family, is on this side. The manger is on this side, and the wall divides them. So I, you know, my for those of you who don't know, my wife is a is a lactation consultant. So one of the things that I was really hoping to find on this trip. Was uh, was some artwork of Mary nursing Jesus. And this is the only one that I found. Uh, so you can see here Mary nursing Jesus behind the wall with the, the soldiers on the outside. Um, and this is some of the. Uh, <laughs> there was, you know, the 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 imagery of and the kind of the story of. Um, you know, Mary and the Holy Family, you know, being being on the wrong side of the wall was just so powerful, and I had never thought about it that, that way. So, um, so we ended that day um, going to to Dar al Kalima University. So, this is a uh, university um, dedicated to the arts for Palestinian students. We had a, a fantastic um, talk from their um, vice president of development. But just really talked about, you know, a lot of things that I never really talked thought about. You know, the students that go to this university have never experienced an election. You know, they don't know what an election is. They've they've grown up. <clears throat> One of the, the kind of missions of the university is to really help the students not um, 
not just have an identity as an oppressed people, right? To really to, to discover their own artwork and and, um, and own own different ways of expressing themselves, which which was really powerful. Okay, so now, now this is so driving from Bethlehem to Jerusalem. Um, we're passing a refugee camp here. So this, this is housed by refugees um, who were displaced either in, in 1948 or 1967, um, you know, or, or at other times when, when the Israeli government and others um, have come in and, and occupied Palestinian territory. And you can just sort of get a sense. So there are, there are pictures up here of, of martyrs who have, who have died um, at the hands of the army. Uh, you know, somebody had asked about like suicide bombers, and, and our tour guide was very adamant, like, no, they're not martyrs. That's not who we who we honor. We don't agree with you know the way that those things are done. <laughs> um, so this is yeah. So this this map I don't think is entirely um, accurate for how we got from Bethlehem to Jerusalem, because. Um, there was a gate, I believe, here that was closed that we had to go around. And the bus driver and the tour guide were saying, you know, that's sort of what happens. There are just times when the gates around Jerusalem get closed and folks need to find a different way around. Um, and so this was a sign uh, that we saw a few times outside of the checkpoints and whenever we were passing through gates from Palestinian territory to Israeli territory. And it says, this road leads to Area A under the Palestinian Authority. The entrance for Israeli citizens is forbidden, dangerous to your lives, and is against Israeli law. So you can really see how people are just pitting against each other. You know, like, like the other side is dangerous. And so you, see, you got a sense of kind of what the refugee camp looked like. And then as we, uh, as we got into Jerusalem, this is what Jerusalem looked like. Yeah, Totally a refugee camp look kind of like uh, any any city, any urban. I, I thought it's a refugee camp. It's it's um so people are kind of jammed in. I mean, city isn't isn't a bad talk, but it's you know it's not a good not a good neighborhood in the city. It's run down. There were you know I mean, there were lots of abandoned cars and stuff that I saw. You know, closed shops. That kind of kind of sense. Um, yeah. But so then, so now this is this is Jerusalem. This is this is headed into Jerusalem. <laughs> so we uh, the first place we went in Jerusalem was up on the top of the Mount of Olives. Uh, so took my picture with you guys. Um, and so at the, from the top of the Mount of Olives is this this road, uh, Palm Sunday Way, the Palm Sunday Road. So this is. And, you know, telling the story of Jesus, Jesus coming down, heading, heading towards Jerusalem um, during Holy Week. Uh, one of the things that was really interesting is this was a, a, an active road. There were cars that would come up and down it as we were walking. And the cars, you know, just barely fit kind of thing. Um, so there was, uh, along the way, there were different sites. So this was um, a church uh, that marks the site of, um, in Scripture, when Jesus is overlooking the city and weeping for Jerusalem. Um, and there were some really gorgeous views from there. But this was something I wasn't expecting at all. But you see, you can see all of these, all of these um, white things. They're all graves. There are just thousands and thousands of graves uh, on the Mount of Olives outside of the walls of the city of Jerusalem. Um, because there are many people who believe, you know, on the last day when the, when the dead rise, that this will be the first place that happens. So people want to want to be there, and and the cemeteries are all divided. You know, there's a Jewish cemetery, there's a Christian cemetery, there's a, 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 a Islamic cemetery. So now down at the bottom of the Palm Sunday Road is the Garden of Gethsemane. This was one of those places that was you know top on my list. I wanted to go there. I wanted to sit in the garden just as Jesus did, and and pray. And when we got there. Um, the garden is surrounded by a fence that was locked. Uh, so this is me being super excited about being at the garden. <laughs> um, so next to the garden is this church, and I'm sort of like, you know, I'm so just upset and despondent at this point, and I'm like, oh, whatever, I'll go into the church. So 
So I go into the church and I'm like, okay, you know, it wasn't, didn't seem to be anything special. Um, up at front in the chancel, there was this big piece of bedrock and they said that that was, that's the spot where Jesus, Jesus prayed, um, you know, after the last supper on the night of his arrest. So I went up and, you know, did what I was supposed to do and I, um, it was on the ground, so you have to kneel down. I put a, put my hand on it. I forget if I put your rock on it or not, sorry. Um, and, you know, so Jesus in that moment prays, you know, one of the things that he says to God is not my will, but yours. So, so I just sat there and I said, you know, thy will be done a couple times. I stayed there for, you know, a minute or two and then I stood up and it's like, okay, I did what I need to do and went to walk out of the church and found that I couldn't walk out of the church. So I needed to go back again. <laughs> uh, so I went back and I did it again, uh, kind of in a different spot. You can see some other pilgrims around and stuff. And stayed there a little bit longer this time and got up and was ready to leave and couldn't, so I needed to go back again. And this time, you know, in addition to that will be done, I also added, here I am, Lord. Uh, you know, again, just this, this commitment to, to who God is calling me to be, apparently. <laughs> um, I, I, I've talked a lot about my sabbatical, to some people, I've talked a lot about my sabbatical and this trip especially being kind of a Jonah moment. Um, I, I found myself for a while trying to run away from God in some ways. And no matter where I go, God's around the corner going, hey, I'm here too. <laughs> um, so, here, so from here we went into the walls of the old city of Jerusalem. Um, and this is the, the Temple Mosque, or uh, the Temple Mount, or the Al-Aqsa Mosque. So this is kind of the, 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 the most disputed um, site in all of Israel. Right? So this is... So for, for, for Jews and for Christians, um, it's believed that this is on the site of Solomon's temple. So they're on the ruins of the temple. Um, and for, uh, for Muslims, it's, um, it's also that, but then it's also, it's the place where Muhammad went at the end of his life, and this is where he ascended into heaven. So, <laughs> So like I said, you know, you know most disputed place. Um, it, it was interesting, one of the things that the, my tour guide had said that I, I hadn't realized, she said there, there used to be a sign that said that it, um, Israelis weren't allowed on this site. And I thought it was you know, a political thing. But uh, she said that what the, what the issue is, is um, so in Solomon's temple, there was a spot called the Holy of Holies, which is only where the priests could go. And because this is the ruins of the temple, they don't know where the Holy of Holies might be. So if, if Jewish folks were in there, they, they might be you know, walking into or on top of the Holy of Holies. Um, so there, there has been a, a pretty long-term agreement for, for a while that um, there are, I think, 13 gates that come in and that the Israeli army would only be at one of them. And they've slowly, and they wouldn't come onto the site, and they've slowly, been coming onto the site more and more. And there was, after I got back, I think in December or January, there was a story about, I think the defense minister of Israel. Um, and, and here you can see, so this is really like, uh, right outside the mosque, you can see these, these soldiers, fully armed. Um, and it seemed to me like there was, there was no reason for them to be there. The whole place seemed to be peaceful. You know, it was a, it was a real, um, depressing sight in a lot of ways because it's like I was just thinking about how beautiful it could be if all of these faiths could come together and celebrate all of this, you know, all of their different faiths in the same spot and what we have in common, and instead we fight over it. Um, I don't think I mentioned this before, but uh, in the church in Bethlehem, um, the, the door was open, it was a nice day out, and while we were in church, you know, doing our Christian thing, I could hear the Muslim call to prayer outside. And I loved it. Like, it was beautiful to me. I just thought it was amazing. And I wish there could, could be more of that. <laughs> um, so here's some, some close-ups of the mosque, which has just this beautiful mosaic of it. Um, we didn't go into the mosque because, because we're not Muslim. Uh, but it was, it was really pretty outside of it. Then from there, is this the same day? The same day. Okay, so this is... Um, so now we're sort of starting the Via Dolorosa, the way, the way of the cross, within the, the walls of Jerusalem that um, talk about Jesus' journey to the cross. 
So this is this is the church where again the Catholics believe uh, Mary was was born. The um, the Greek church was like 50 feet the other way. Um, uh, this is this is one of the I think one of if not the only existing church from the, the time of the Crusades that's still standing. So that was really interesting. Um, and one of the things that this church is really known for is its acoustics. So so folks. Uh, go there and and you'll you'll see uh, and hear hopefully um, <laughs> that lots of people had that in mind when, when they showed up. So, that something happened and we built a church on it you know so so one of the so as you go along there are, um, there are all these places that are marked with these that, that talk about the different stations of the cross the different things that happened on on Jesus's journey um, and I kind of lost it right in the beginning because the first church that we go to was the uh, sanctuaries of flagellation and condemnation and I'm like so you know so they arrest Jesus and they're like all right we're gonna go to the sanctuary of condemnation and I think he kind of figured out what was going on. That um, so there, this is one spot, uh, you know, where they say Jesus paused and put his hand up, rested. So people have been have been putting their hand there for you know hundreds of years. So there you are, um, and it's kind of neat because it's just like so many people have touched it for so many years. It's it's you know depressed in. Um, I took a picture here because we have a few folks at the church who, who work with blind folk, and it was another another time that I was thinking about NCC. And you can kind of get a sense. So this is, you know, along the Via Dolorosa in the old city, um, just you know these narrow pathways with tour groups trying to pass each other, and you know dozens of people. But then at the same time, there were these shops that you know some of them were tourist shops, but others were just where people go every day to shop. You know. They're, um, to do their regular shopping. So it was an interesting um, interesting thing to witness. Well, 
So at the end of the Via Dolorosa, this is the Church of the Holy Sepulchre, which um, you know they believe uh, is the site of the last three stations of the cross. So when Jesus dies on the cross at the Rotha, um, is taken down from the cross and is buried in the tomb. <laughs> this is a great story. So this is one of those things where different denominations over the years have kind of been in charge of the church. And there's all of these arguments and people, people haven't gotten along. And <laughs> I forget what it was, but it was, I think the Ottomans or something. There was somebody, um, kind of, you know, an emperor, somebody in charge of everything, who said, okay, so we're going to share this. And in order for anything to happen, everybody needs to agree. So this ladder has been there for hundreds of years because everyone's afraid to move it in case somebody else disagrees. <laughs> So inside the church, uh, you know, again, you can just see how, how crowded it is. Um, so this was another slab of bedrock where, where they said Jesus' body was prepared after, after he died. Um, and then as you head upstairs, this is where, um, so this little rock here that's under this altar, you know, in kind of this whole nave, um, is, is what they say was Golgotha, the, the, sot, the site where Jesus died on the cross. And then back downstairs, so under that site actually here, this, is, um, this was a, a rock that's under the site of Golgotha, and they say this is Jesus' blood. Um, this here is where the tomb is. The tomb is inside of that. I couldn't, couldn't take pictures inside of that, but that was, you know, this was another one of those sort of and this is, I think this is my Easter sermon, but this was um, another one of those places where I didn't know what to think, because right? it was, I mean, like, literally, like, Disney World-level crowds, you know, like, you can just see thousands and thousands of people, and so this, this here, this is my group, and right behind us, we had some folks who were trying to push through us, like, for the entire, like, hour we were online, and we're like, you know, there's a whole, like, that's not very Christian, there's nobody in the tomb, you know, like, what do you, like, what's your rush? So, so we kind of linked arms and days after complaining about the wall in Bethlehem, we formed our own wall. <laughs> um, so this is the next day now, so this is, I forget exactly where this is, but it's, it's further away from where we were. So this is the Church of the Visitation, where, um, where they, they believe, um, Mary's cousin Elizabeth lived and gave birth to John the Baptist. So this is the well where they, they say that the, the two women are. Um, this is a cool statue of the two of them. Now this was another site that, uh, it's a, a newer site, it's only been around a little while, but this is, this is a site where other folks um, think could have been the site of, of, a, of Jesus' history. And one of the um, one of the kind of driving factors to that, there is an old quarry that's nearby, and if you kind of look in the quarry, you can kind of see what looks like a face, kind of looks like a skull. So there, you know, there are folks who say well, this, this could have been the place of the skull, right? And, and then nearby is this kind of cave, this tomb hewn out of, of the wall, um, you know, which is what kind of what I've always imagined. The, the tomb might have been, been like, and we, we went into there. It was interesting because this, this site is run by more evangelical folks, and you know the way that the message was, was discussed and talked about was, was very different. It was interesting to, to see that. Hmm. And, and as I talked about before I left, there was really one, one the, the main reason that I went on this trip, the main reason that I went there, was to go to Rosie's tattoo, uh, to get my tattoo. <laughs> <laughs> So, so this is uh, Wasim Rizouk. He is the 27th generation in his family to be tattooing. Um, his family has been tattooing um, pilgrims to Jerusalem for 500 years. And um, so they have a couple of these stamps here, these wooden stamps. And this one here is 500 years old. So they took this, he took the stamp and put it on my arm and then, then did a tattoo over it. So it's a stamp that, you know, who knows how many folks have had. So the stamp is, you know, most of the tattoo, and then I had him add up here in Aramaic that will be done. Um, these are the 12 people on my, 
uh, tour site who got tattoos at this one. Popular place. And, uh, and, 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 to, to be. and that's my trip. <laughs> so, yeah, so you can kind of, you know, so we started out down here, we went up here, um, here's Jerusalem, we cut back out there, there. you know, we, we, we covered some of them. And this is, so this map is a little bit outdated, but this, this map is where the UN in 67, maybe? Uh, well, no, this is actually the 59 armistice line. So this is when the UN divided up the land. This, this is Palestinian territory here. This is the, the Gaza Strip. Um, and this has been whittled away and whittled away for, for years. Uh, so there were times that, um, times that we passed through this, times that we had to go around it. There were a couple sites that we didn't get to go to because there had been conflict and, and fighting recently. So, thanks for listening. Any questions or anything? Anybody have any? Yeah? You said you covered some ground, but it's all very compact, right? What, 75 miles top to bottom there? 100? Um, good question. You know, from, from say, Nazareth to Bethlehem was about two hours in a bus. So, yeah, so 150 miles, something like that. Um, but then, that, you know, that, that kind of thing was interesting to then think about the Holy Family, you know, doing that by, by walking. Um, one of the things that I've seen pointed out, if, if they were doing that nowadays, they would have to go through, I think it's something like 13 gates. Uh, mm. check one. Mm. And, uh, were there any places you weren't allowed to video or take pictures? Um, I think the only place I couldn't take pictures was inside the tomb in the, in the Church of the Holy Sepulchre. Um, I don't think, I think otherwise we, were, we could take pictures. Um, what's the significance of that tattoo other than that it was old? I mean, the cross is such. Um, so the cross is the, the Jerusalem cross. So oh, I thought that's the Magdalene. Oh, that's on your foot. Yeah. Um, yeah, so this, this is called the Jerusalem cross, the, the large cross um, surrounded by four, four small crosses. Okay. And then the, I think those are olive branches. Oh, okay. <laughs> What was the climate like? I mean, was it hot? hot the climate was very interesting. Yeah, that was something we weren't prepared for. Because um, we were told, um, you know, in November, we were told it would be pretty temperate. It would be around 65, 70 degrees, so kind of wear, wear pants and a jacket. <clears throat> but not everything in this whole area is the same climate. <laughs> so, what, so when we started out down here in the, in the, around the Dead Sea, it was very hot. It was desert-like, and you know, most of us only brought one pair of shorts or you know, or, or a skirt or something to wear um, for uh, for a while. But then, as we headed up, it got a lot more temperate, um, and, and towards the end in Jerusalem, it was it was cool. It was in the 60s. That was one of the things that, that was really um, something I hadn't thought of, you know, that, that all of Israel isn't exactly the same, you know. Um, uh, and kind of going back to Eddie's question, you just reminded me. Um, uh, while I think we were able to take pictures everywhere, one of, the, um, one of the things that was very interesting, there were sites that we would go to where um, <laughs> They never stopped me for anything, but for women, they would stop them for having bare shoulders or for, or for wearing pants sometimes. There was, um, um, at the Western Wall and the, uh, the, the Temple Mount, um, I think that was one of the sites. Oh, and the, the Basilica of the Annunciation too. They had, they had temporary skirts that they would give to women that were like, you know, the disposable tablecloth material. <laughs> But they really, I don't think, I got in trouble one time when I went, in, when I went into the Greek Orthodox Church um, of the Annunciation. I, I had run in to take that picture, I think it was, and I forgot to take my hat off, and I got yelled at for that. But beyond that, basically the men were able to do whatever they wanted, but the women were policed in a lot of spaces. Yeah, about 12 years ago, one of my grad students asked me, well actually she was a Palestinian, and she talked about how 
um, during the initial Israeli-Palestinian conflict that uh, her relatives' farms were confiscated by the Israelis and that um, periodically, even to like 12 years ago, Israeli soldiers would just randomly go through Palestinian neighborhoods and raid houses, just raid them randomly and tear things up and throw things out and terrify people. So I was wondering if you saw any evidence of that or the resentment in your travels. Yeah, yeah that's still happening today. Um, and yeah, this is, this is my sermon, I think March 26th, um, I'll be talking about it. <coughs> um, but that was, uh, the um, Abud, the, the shopkeeper who made that, uh, there were uh, experiences like that where I got to, to speak to people um, you know, who weren't part of the tourist site and stuff, and to hear those kinds of stories. And, uh, and it's, it's complex and it's, it's confusing. And I've, I've spent some time with, with Rabbi Josh Brendel um, over at Temple Bethel because I don't want to, you know, I want to make sure that I'm presenting kind of the story as, as fairly as I can, but it's, it's a complicated story. And, um, you know, in that Banksy Hotel, um, there, was, there was a museum in there that, and actually that was one place that I couldn't film that I really wanted to. Um, but one of, the, one of the exhibits, you're, you're kind of in a house and, and there's a sign that says, if the phone rings, pick it up. And you pick it up and it says, this is the Israeli army, we're coming to your house in 10 minutes, we're gonna knock it down, you have 10 minutes to get out. Yeah. You know, like, yeah. um, <clears throat> and, you know, so one of, one of the reasons why it's so complicated, you know, is, is separating it from anti-Semitism. And, you know, one of the, one of the things that, that everyone really talked about, kind of on the ground, including the Palestinians, was, was the difference between the Jewish people and the Israeli government. You know, like, this isn't something that every, every person who lives in Israel is doing or experiencing. This is, you know, far right government folks, um, and there are a lot of foreigners who are coming in now who are doing it. It's a whole thing that ties in with American evangel evangelism and, and all that kind of stuff. Mm. How does that tie in with American evangelism? <laughs> um, so many of the right wing Christians nowadays who are, who are very evangelical um, believe in the rapture and the end times and believe in order for the rapture of the end times to happen that the Jews need to return to Israel. So, so they, they pretend that they're very pro-Israel, pro-Jewish, but in reality it's because they think it will speed up the end. And, and, and when the rapture comes, all the Jews will be converted to Christianity. Oh yeah, there's that too. too. You, you, you left out an important step. They don't get to stay Jewish. <laughs> So yeah, so it's it's a big complicated situation. And one of the things, one of the one of the best things, and this is probably the end of my sermon on the twenty sixth. But uh, um, the uh, the vice president of development at Dara Kalima, um, you know, so she's talking to a room basically full of pastors, and, and everyone's like, what what can we do? What do we bring back to our congregations? And she said, it's it's all about being local. You know, it's about figuring out what the injustices are where you are and what you have control over and and fighting injustice anywhere is fighting, fighting injustice everywhere. <clears throat> and that kind of helped me breathe a little bit more, you know, like, because so often we run into these things and it's like, oh, now I need to, now there's another area of the country I need to fix and, and save somehow. Yeah. 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 All right, well, thank you all. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.